And some idiot, whoever drilled it, has drilled a hole in the sump with the freaking... Oh, with the bloody drill bit. I cannot believe it. Look at that. What an absolute idiot. Welcome back to part 33. We're now on a regular schedule again, so one video a week, so maybe two. Hopefully two. Anyway, welcome back to Absolute Monix, proudly sponsored by Graham Styling, who do automotive body parts like the spoiler that we have behind us now. Um, in this video, it is seriously time that we did some major work on the Supra. So it will be getting the Supra ready for paint, so that means taking off the panels that we need to take off and the rest of the wrap, as well as building up the engine and drilling our hole for our oil drain. And reseeding the sumps, putting the sumps back on, and then adjusting it on the stand so it's safe, and then we can carry on building it. So, let's show you where we are currently. So, here we have the engine obviously that's on the stand. It's currently being held by an axle stand on a load of bricks on the other side because we obviously we've had to disconnect these two bolts that will actually hold the engine on so we can get the sump off. Uh, you should have watched the last video so you can, you know, why we've took the sump off. Not good, not a good reason. I separated the gearbox off there now, um, so it's just easier to lift on the crane and it's not as big and in the way. Uh, currently draining the oil, that's why it's, the bucket's there and etc. So once that's drained, I'll be able to lift it a bit higher so it's easy for me to work on. Drop the sump and the upper sump, so that's the black sump on the bottom, and then the silver bit goes all the way along on the top, which is the upper sump. And you can currently see the bit that we need to drill. We're going to have to tap the threads into those two holes and drill that all the way through nice and straight so it doesn't mess up like the people did on the other one. Once we've done the drilling, we can then attach the sump onto here. I bought some sealant in that. I have it somewhere in the garage. I have sealant over here. Black silicon, Loctite recommended for do doing that because it deals with oil very well and obviously it shouldn't cause any leaks so I'll have to run that all the way around the edge and to clean up the stuff that's already there and uh, once that's sealed we'll be able to then seal other bits off of here like the alternator and the water pump etc etc and I've got some new gasket sealant and things like that and um, the engine mount has got lots of things we can seal off it so that's where the engine sits uh, and the car needs to have its mirrors taken off, the door handles taken off, the skirts need to come off, the wings need to come off, uh, the, obviously the spoiler needs to come off, door trims on the inside need to come off, um, then in the engine bay I need to take off as much things as I could possibly do for painting the engine bay. So like the igniters and pipes and whatever else I can unbolt, because um, then the rest will be painted. Cool, this will be fun. Let's crack on with this video. So now that all the oil with a bit of luck has come out into this bucket, I put the the drain bung back in, just so I don't lose it. And then I now need to start undoing all the bolts that go around the edge. This one's a nut on there, but all the rest are bolts. So I'm gonna undo them because I have to do that to get at some of the uh, bolts. You can just see the top of the bolt coming through there. Uh, there's another one there. Uh, I think there's another one this side. So there's, there's three each side inside the bottom sump. And obviously the only way to get at them is by taking the the, you know, the, the, the sump off sort of thing. All the rest of them are external. They're on the edges here. Um, but there's, I think it's six in total. Uh, and you have to set the strainer and that off to get to it. So let's do that now. I'm gonna lift the engine up so it's a bit higher and I'm gonna do that now. So I undone all the bolts and the two nuts that go around the edge as you can see so the pan's off and there was still a good amount of oil left in it. So obviously I've poured that into the bucket uh, and now there's obviously more leaking out from the engine. Uh, you can't really see it there, you can see it dripping out, coming out of the strainer. There we go, out of the strainer. Um, it's not a bad thing, I suppose, that we're taking this off because we'll be able to clean the strainer. Make sure that grill's clean. Now, 
it's a little bit scary to look in here and see <laughs> that there's a loose hang on let's get it on the lens there we are that is loose I've not touched that yet that bolt that bolt is loose so that's not good but at least I'm going to leave this now for a good 20 minutes while it drips because there's a good amount straining out oh I've got head brush then yeah there's a good amount dripping out from the bottom of that strainer but you can see it they are just falling out so I ain't going to do anything else now so that's drip dry otherwise I'm just going to end up oil everywhere and I've got a lot of oil to get out as it is now so the bottom sump is off uh, and obviously we'll have to, I'll put it in my parts wash and we'll clean it up get rid of all the old sealant which is around the edge as you can see there yeah get rid of that um, I'll have to clean it up in the parts washer and then we'll have to do the same with the upper sump once we get that off but we've got to remove the strainer and any plates that's in the way as you can see on there obviously we've got to make it look like that one um, yeah so not be long uh, and we'll be back with the next part of this video I have purchased an oil feed and return kit off of the good old internet which hopefully should have most things that we need we have a new return line not necessarily need it but it's just what come in the kit we have a new feed uh, hopefully that will be long enough we have the adapters for the feed and then the flange which goes onto the turbo although I do have these already I just bought another full kit um, then we have a flange which goes onto the drain once we've drilled it with its gasket and its bolts we have an adapter bit which screws inside there you know, like so then that allows you to attach one of these, well, they're both the same, one of them on one of them is designed for the turbo one of them is designed to actually go onto the actual drain one don't know, in, no yet till we do it we've also got a weld on bit if we were to use it you weld this side uh, onto the actual sump but then obviously it just gives you the thread straight away to tap into one of those blue adapter bits um, yeah it's a complete kit but it's a universal kit that's why it's got a few extra bits in it um, but yeah that might hopefully come in handy some of those parts on that it cost about 25 quid delivered it's not too bad so at least we have oil lines and that ready so now that the oil is drained out there is two bolts or two nuts shall I say on this edge to remove the strain of this side and there's one just over there <laughs> it's odd point and show uh, yeah there Re removes the strainer then there's the bolts which holds that plate in so we need to remove the plate because that allows us to get to the bolts above it so I'm on my own at the moment so you can see what I'm going to remove I'm going to remove them and then I'll show you what it looks like afterwards so bear with me a minute I should be back and there we are we can see inside the bottom of our engine now in the middle of the screen now you'll see four bolts that go up into the engine and then there are four more just there that's now in the middle of the screen we need to remove those eight as well as all the ones that go along the outside edge top on back top bottom whatever you want to call it and there's some bigger ones just here on this edge yeah, near, the, near the inspection cover they're slightly bigger uh, I think the 12's on the inside and I don't know they're quite a bit big on the outside so that's what we're going to need to remove so we've got to remove these small ones there's four of them and then there's one big one here on this end so there's actually five on the inside each side so there's ten in total um, so I'm going to remove them and then we're going to get this sump off so I've undone all those bolts there was five 14 mil bolts and uh, lots of twelves <laughs> I can't remember how many but there's five fourteens they're the bigger ones so now we've got to split the sump off which takes a bit of time obviously you can see there's a join line we need to I'm going to get my screwdriver flat blade nice and thin tap it in and then work my way along all the way along until it basically splits off so that is what I'm going to do it wasn't hard to split this one as you can see we've got a line already just got to be careful to catch it so 
I need to look at the other side really. Okay, so see where it's attached. It's just the other side that's holding it there. I'm going to run the other side and I'm going to prise it off, but literally just be careful that you don't obviously drop it. Uh, there isn't enough room for the camera on the other side, unfortunately, so I'll leave it rolling this side as I go around. How's that? So the sump is now on the bench, as you can see, looks a lot like a sump. <laughs> um, I've took out the uh, oil level sensor reader, which is just there, because I'm going to stick it in my parts washer and wash it, you see, so there's no point washing the electrics, it's, it's probably not going to do good things for it. But yeah, I'm just going to pop this in the part washer, pop this in the parts washer, clean up all this oil, and we'll have a really good look at it then. So I shall be back in a moment. So now it's back on the bench, <coughs> a lot cleaner than it was, I mean it's not 100% but it's a lot cleaner. I'm now going to go around with a blade or a knife and I'm going to scrape up all of this old sealant that's on. So I'm going to do that now, both sides obviously because obviously this is for the bottom sump and obviously there's the big top, a lot of sealant which goes for the top. Do that now and then we'll go look at drilling the hole, because there's the hole ready to be drilled and tapped that uh, you know we'll, we'll clean the surfaces first that's one side all scraped up and in case you're wondering the easiest way to scrape off the gunk you get yourself a Stanley blade or a blade uh, use two thumbs you know one on each side and just keep scraping along like that we'll see I can only show you with one hand I'm holding the camera but that is the easiest way I found to remove the gunk in all the experiences of removed gunk and it still works fine for this one, so you know, I'm going to carry on now doing the other side. But it's just a helpful tip for you. Welcome back. I'm not kidding you, it's about an hour later. <laughs> that took some time. I also made sure I've cleared out these grooves the best I can as well. So that obviously helps it seal. But don't forget, you've still got the bottom of your engine to clean. And also, the pan to clean. So don't forget them you know, don't start sticking that up full of you know full of sealant and then oh crap you know yeah you've still got these to clean but I'm fed up cleaning for the time being so now it's time to drill I think all you need to do and I don't know why the previous owner didn't do it is drill straight just drill straight just drilling straight brings it straight in oh the holes here just straight in and it'll come out here and then it can dribble in from the turbo. No issues, no questions asked, done. But no, the guy was an idiot. So, I'm going to set my drill up. And I'm going to see if I can get it in the vise as well, it be nice. I'm not 100% sure if I can get it in the vise because I don't want to bend anything or distort anything. Might have to be drilled on the bench and see how we go. But I will start with a small hole and we'll work our way up. So, we'll get the drill set up. So now it's time to drill this hole. In mind we're drilling it into here, this bit, straight. I must stress, it, you drill it straight. <laughs> so I'm going to line it up in the middle. And 
then we have our first hole, which I stress is straight, <laughs> not down at an angle like the previous guy did in the other swim. So now it's time to start ramping up the drill with the sizes. Then we'll go again. Line up with the hole. Nice straight hole. And then we ramp up the drum sizes again. Just gradually, you know, we're going to put them up a couple of minutes at a time. Line up the hole. Great. <laughs> I'm running out of big bits now. Just be careful it doesn't snag. There we go again. See, it's snagged, but you know, I was holding the jaw nice and tight. That was a 10mm piece, and the biggest I think I got is 12. I have a 13mm truckless key drill, so 12 fits in. And then we go again. remember to keep it straight. There we have a lovely hole. That is straight. Look at that. I'm going to do a little bit of research before I carry on drilling to find out if that is sufficient or if I need to drill it out for the full size of this as I'm not 100% sure. So I should be back to you in a minute. Okay, so I'm back and it is actually a day later from when I started drilling this hole because I've been doing prep work on the Supra. Uh, I did some research online. Uh, apparently the 12mm hole, which we have there, might be okay, um, but people have drilled 16s, 18s and some people have hollowed it out to the full size. So I've gone and bought myself a stepper drill bit, which I've never used before, but it should be sufficient for what, what we're doing here. Uh, and it goes up to 20mm, so I'm hoping if I can get all the steps to go through it will have a 20mm hole, bear in mind it's 12 at the moment which would be obviously a lot better than the 12 that we have now so I'm putting it into our drill bit sorry I'll put it into our drill I need to line it up with the 12mm we already have and then just go at it really If you can see now, it's getting rather large. I just need to make sure that we go all the way through with the 20. It's not quite there yet, but it is nearly there. Just be wary for when it snags, because it does snag. There we go, 20 mil. Again, just be wary of those snakes. I'll grab the camera off of the mount. And as you can see, loads better drainage hole. Nice and straight. Just come straight into here and obviously the oil will trickle down and go into the sump. That is fantastic. I'm going to chuck it back in the parts washer or use my airline, whatever's best. I'm going to get all these filings out of the way. But that is how you properly drill out the hole. 
Uh, in fact, no, I'm not getting these findings just yet because we've got to tap some threads into these holes. So I'm going to get my tapping die set out. So I found myself some M5 bolts. Now, once I've got the plate on the back, you know, it will be the right size for here. So I'm just tapping out an M5 thread. Just make sure it's nice and straight. And it'll just twist in. We're all the way to the end, so I hit the very bottom, so at least I know it's all threaded. Another that there. Yep, I'm at the end now, so I want to come back out. And that, I don't think you can see on the camera, is one threaded hole. And that one is not, so I just need to tap the other one. But the bolt I've found now should screw in there. Just tap in the thread of the other one there. Again, an M5. Now, the M5 bolts I've got are perfectly fine in terms of length. But I need to put a washer on them to actually hold the flange tightly. So I'm going to clean out this thread now I've done it. Uh, and then we'll have a look at sticking the flange in that on. So now I've found some super washers to pack it out a bit. Obviously I've threaded the bolts in. I just need to nip them nicely tight. Be wary not to over tighten them because you are bolting into an aluminium sump, as you know, because you drilled it. But aluminium is soft, so it's easy to rip out the threads. So you don't want to do it too tight. And that's on, it's got its gasket, it's got its flange. There is our new drain piece. In case you're wondering, I bought a kit which I showed you earlier on offline, offline, off the net, which comes with a universal kit with universal pieces of the stuff you need for your drain. Now, I'm not 100% sure because I've never actually used these pieces before. And I should do more research before allowing oil to pass through them. But I'm pretty sure that piece goes into there. And this one's screwed onto the end. And then obviously the pipe comes off this one. But that does seem quite long. So I'm not 100% sure if I'm right with my pieces. But. You get the gist of it. I also need to make sure that I use some PTFE tape, that like plumbing tape, and put it on the threads so it's going to stop any oil coming back through. So now that's on, I need to clean the sump out again and then it's ready to go back on the car. Okay, so I've cleaned up the surface, I've washed out any filings. Um, I've dried it off the best I can. It's very pretty in there. Um, I've cleaned off the engine surface as well. Uh, so I've got all the gunk off the engine side. So now I've got my sealant and I need to go around all the way around, all the way around the sump and around the bolt holes as well as. Because uh, it says so on my little box for the, for the sealant. Also comes with a nice little tool to help you twist and squeeze it out, which I think is pretty handy. And it comes with a nozzle. So we're going to pierce the top. Like so, the top is pierced. We're going to put on 
the end cap and then I'm going to chop the end off with some scissors. So I've chopped the end off so it's you now a, a decent size and I'm just going to start going all around the edges now. So I'll start this off and then I'll pause because we don't need to film all of this. Now I'm going to start in this corner. No, I'm going to block the camera. I'm going to start here. At this rate, I've seen an hour. I found out it's a squeezing tube and it's twist that end all the time and it makes a nice bead come out. So, I don't know if you can see me on the camera at the moment, you can probably just see me. As soon as I've got this on guys, I'm not going to be able to move the camera in time because I'm on my own. I have to go and put it on and do the bolts up. So I won't be able to show you that because I ain't got the time to move the frame around. I'll try. I might put some of the bolts and then move the camera. But I ain't got a mega amount of time for this to go off you see. Uh, check anywhere I've missed, any bolt holes I've missed, anything that looks a bit rubbish. And add extra on, I'm just chop it off at the end. Right, we'll put this on. I should be back. And we're back. I'm not going to lie to you, it is actually the next day. Because I put this on and I put all the bolts in. Um, and then the battery died on the camera. So I couldn't even show you anyway. So I've left it go off and dry. And we're currently at this situation. I need to put the gasket for the strainer. I need to put the the, like, the baffle plate that was in, uh, and then the strainer. Clean up the last bit of oil around there. Clean up the bottom sump, and then attach the bottom sump. Then it's done, and I can actually put the bolts back in the frame as well now. And I've come down with a cold, yeah. uh, and then once it's on, I just need to bolt in the oil level sensor that goes into that hole there next to where the dipstick would go so I'm quite happy now I just need to put the baffle plate in uh, yeah I'm going to do the baffle plate next so I bolt with the baffle plate in at least I think it's called a baffle plate and the strainer I just need to clean up this bit of oil here on the flange um, I've just been cleaning up that so I can stop putting the guns around the flange and once that's clean and that's good, I'm going to stick it on. So that's what I'm going to do now. And I'll just show you putting it on. So here we have our sealed up sump. I'm going to place it on <laughs> the right way around. That way, there we go, that took some fearing out. Now there's two studs already there, so as long as I place them on the studs. Okay, now I need to put nuts on, where's the nuts? That's just a case of doing up all the nuts and all the bolts, etc, etc.
going to do it quite evenly. So I'll come back to it and put more in. So once you've got your sump on, <coughs> you need to make sure you tidy up the glue around the edges. The glue of the ceiling, you know what I mean? The person now starts to rub it around the edge, it's a nice tight seal. And that is how to drill and refit and undo and that is Yeah, that's what I see doing it. So my friend came around to help me lift the engine back up. So the engine's now on its frame properly. Bolted with its four bolts into the bell housing. As you can see, it's nice and secure now. Had a quick tidy up, obviously I spilled some oil on the floor, but you know, it's a garage. More oil there. I don't really care because it's a garage. So the sump's now done properly. Next episode, I'm probably going to start looking at the oil lines now. Now I've had to do an extra job, but it's made a good video for the guys that are doing this project because they can see what to do now. Yeah, I need to put the oil switch in, so I'll do that next episode. I'll get this sandwich on, sandwich plate on next episode and start looking at the oil lines, I think. Um, so, yeah. I've been working on the engine bay a bit, starting to remove everything in the engine bay so I can get ready for paint. Because I've decided what colour I'm going. But you know, that might be a surprise. You might be able to guess, who knows. Um, so yeah, engine is done. And it comes to the usual end of the video, where we go. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and join us in another video. Uh, please share with us with all your friends, especially any super people that's doing this project. It's very worthwhile for them. Uh, if you want to support us, by all means, go to our shop and buy some of our awesome stickers. Uh, we've got some new designs in for 2016, so go and have a look. The links for the website are in the description. Uh, peace out. We'll see you in the video.